Hi, um, this is Bernard Carter, uh, CTO at Now Micro, and uh, you're at a modern Windows appliance for digital signage. Um, we're going to get started here. It looks like we got some pretty good list of attendees at this point. Um, as a reminder, this will be recorded and available afterwards. And we'll definitely have some time for questions at the end. I don't expect to take the full hour, but definitely wanted to sort of block off some time in the calendar. So a little bit about Now Micro. Um, you know, we help customers navigate technology to the edge and beyond, right? So, um, you know, we bring our special sauce of automation, software, um, understanding your hardware, your use cases, and software to give you, uh, you know, the best device you can and the best experience during that entire device lifecycle. Um, got a couple shots in here of our new production facility. We moved at the end of last year. Um, this is a, just a section of our new uh, production facility. Um, and I, you know, I took a screenshot of uh, where we installed our pretty video wall. We have several, you know, testing video walls uh, throughout our new office. Just wanted to show that off. But as an agenda, um, you know, went through the introduction. Um, we're going to define an appliance. We're going to say what limits appliance and then start talking about what a modern Windows appliance looks like. Um, the pieces inside, I'm not going to go into super, super techie depth, but want to explain that there is some uh, iceberg. There's a lot below the surface here that's happening. And then give a demo and have time for questions. Um, and like I said, not planning on going super deep into the technical aspects of this, but definitely want to show where those aspects, aspects exist as we go through this and then you know i'm uh you know demoing here on camera so i do have a a little kiosk appliance here that's actually um an in-store screen solution uh powered by lenovo I actually have um a nano iot device inside this little thing running it and uh, i'll talk a little bit more about that later so what defines an appliance um thought about this quite a bit uh, you know, we, we talked to a lot of customers around uh, why they choose particular products for particular use cases, and it came down to four things that I thought were, uh, you know, pillars of this. One is defined experience and simple deployment. Um, I call it the linear OOB, out of box experience on Rails, right? So um, if you've been in like an arcade, uh, playing an arcade game, and, you know, you're on Rails where you're going, and there are some options, you have a, you know, a fun experience, but it is, it's on Rails, right? There's also a perception of security, right? Uh, either no patching or automated patching, whether that's real or not. Um, I think we could all agree that typical embedded visual communication type devices have a lower, um, uh, you know, th th there, there is a, 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 a bit of a lower surface area to attack, right? They're not general purpose computing devices consuming email and web content. Um, there's a walled garden, right? So um, oftentimes we're talking about a platform, it's a vendor's platform, and there's a lot of focus on outcome, not the journey, right? So less on speeds and feeds and what's underneath and more about uh, it powers this and empowers this kind of content in this great way. And then, uh, you know, sort of segment uh, capability, right? So, uh, you know, devices that are focused on particular segments, whether it be single channel, 1080p, 4K, video wall, so on and so forth. So what limits an appliance, right? Um, I, I, I would definitely say closed ecosystem, right? So uh, in the case of like a, you know, like an Apple iPad, right? You have to be authorized to be on their store, um, kind of ride the treadmill of continuously updating your app, pass qualifications to be on the app store. So there's an investment involved, right? in being in a closed ecosystem. Uh, also backwards compatibility, right? So if you have years of investment in a particular platform, you may have to rebuild significant portions of that to be on a new appliance-like platform. Uh, there's also limitations in configuration and customization. So in the same way that there are linear rails out of box experience, sometimes there's linear rails on the use cases. So uh, say I need three screens, maybe we don't support that. Maybe we don't support uh, portrait mode 4K content, right? Because the underlying hardware platform can't support the, the decoding, right? There's many reasons that end up sort of limiting what we can do and we end up sort of picking 
and choosing uh, you know, sort of a, a narrow path to what we want. And that can limit, you know, the experiences we can build, right? And fourth, I think it's, you know, branding, right? Uh, often we see, you know, maybe it's a bright color, but, uh, you know, like a logo, you know, whatever it is, but it's typically their branding, not yours, right? So they're buying an appliance. Uh, in the same case, you buy a TiVo, you might not know the content on the TiVo, right? Um, it's their branding, not yours. Uh, and, you know, one other thing uh, is we're going through the talk and kind of thinking about who is this for. Um, I wanted to sort of start out with the, uh, you know, who's this for? What, what what segments are we talking about? So ISVs, right? So software vendors, right? Either sell through, like they're selling their own hardware or own appliances, or they're passing it off to a you know, hardware partner like Now Micro um, with their, uh, you know, curated, you know, images, whatever you want to call them. Um, integrators, right? Obviously, uh, you know, pulling together a lot of solutions to build a solution for a customer, and then end users themselves. Um, I think end users are one of the sort of forgotten segment in here. Sometimes um, end users through demand generation dictate, I want this kind of experience. How do you provide that experience, and how do you keep yourself sticky with those end users um, if that's if they want an appliance like solution, right? How how do I how do I provide this to them and still focus on what I do best and deliver the experience, the customization, all those other wonderful things I'd like want to. If we're talking about a traditional Windows delivered experience, I think there's an outsized focus on speeds and feeds. Um, oftentimes people will come and say, I need an i7. Well, a fifth gen Intel i7 fifth gen processor, Broadwell or you know fourth gen Skylake, and a 10th or 11th gen or a 12th gen processor have uh, you know sort of double digit percentage performance differences. So a 5th gen i7 and a 10th gen i7, those are basically completely different processors. And uh, you know a 10th gen i3 might be equivalent to that that older spec. Um, if we focus too much on speeds and feeds, I think we lose uh, what we're actually trying to get to, which is capabilities. Can it drive the content and experience that I want? Um, I think that also leads to overspecking hardware. There are a lot of experiences that need substantial hardware. Those exist, they're beautiful, especially video wall systems. Um, I think overspecking hardware is definitely a danger. Um, we often look at future proofing. I think future proofing can be managed a little bit more intelligently with uh, by segmenting the content a bit, right? So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that and how we sort of curate this, but Overspecking hardware is definitely a danger of pricing yourself, for example, out of a solution um, or providing uh, providing hardware that uh, never will run anything more complex than what it was delivered with or initially. Um, the third thing is unmanaged or completely managed. Uh, you know, oftentimes we hear either I don't want to manage this in the slightest, um, and I you know, want to fire and forget and have it just do its thing and then I'll replace it, or it needs to be completely managed by my internal IT team, uh, maybe an integrator, so on and so forth. Um, there are some good spaces in the middle of a, you know, managed by something like our DICE uh, solution, uh, Microsoft Intune, uh, maybe like an AirWatch or other sort of MDM-like platform. There are many solutions to sort of bridge the gap between the two you know, completely in the wild, unmanaged and completely corporate managed devices. I think realistically people want a device that works and if something goes wrong, it gets fixed. I think focusing on how it's managed, sometimes again, misses the point of delivering a capability or experience. Um, and then we also have an, a, a complex eco, uh, addition ecosystem with associated pitfalls. So, you know, there's, um, you know, LTSC versions of Windows, there's, you know, you know, typically the IoT Enterprise versions, there's Pro, so on and so forth. Um, that can kind of get complex to sort of parse through those and understand what your operational needs are over time. Um, we sort of take away some of that by, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this in the next slide, but there are some solutions to this and sort of avoiding the pitfalls while having sort of best of breed um, software ecosystem choices. So, we want to utilize all of these investments we've been making into the largest software ecosystem in the world, right? Uh, Microsoft Windows. And we want to deliver the experience, right? It's smooth, it's customizable, it's testable, 
it's you know performant resilient and we want to focus on delivering your experience and allowing you allowing the device the appliance to get out of your way so that you can deliver that to your customers right or your end users um we want to combine those advantages right so you can curate a list of hardware with a focus on capabilities for the cms in question we can streamline the out of box experience put it on rails we can deliver the device completely ready to rock and not requiring field customization. We have that large backwards compatible software ecosystem, right? We can even run some 16-bit executables on 64-bit windows, for example, old installers. It's an amazing amount of backwards compatibility. And these devices can be branded. Um, they can be an obtrusive you know, metal boxes. They can be bright colors. They can be screen printed. These things are all possible with a modern Windows appliance. So what's happening inside? Um, I, I promise not to go too much into how the sausage is being made here, but I do want to sort of uh, lay together the layers of what we're bringing to de deliver an appliance experience. First is benchmarking, right? We need to understand your software needs and find the right size solution for your segments, right? Um, that is a fairly easy process. You probably know what hardware runs best for your platform. Uh, we know a lot of platforms, we can sort of help bridge that gap and figure out what's the best uh, hardware. Image build is our solution for automating operating system builds so we can give sort of a deterministic output. We change control and automate the OS build so that you get that same thing on whatever hardware you're ordering, whether it's a little single channel player or dual channel player versus you know a video wall solution, we can have the same image, same tools, same configuration. Uh, DICE powers a lot of what I'm showing today. Uh, DICE is our order information, device management, device lifecycle management system. It's a lot of things to a lot of people. Um, in this case, I'm using DICE Configurator, which is our cloud configuration and out of box experience that we developed um, a number of years ago, but I have just launched our refresh, which is one of the reasons we're on this webinar, but also sort of tying together all these concepts to deliver that modern Windows device. Um, and then, uh, you know, internal, external uh, facing device catalog and spec sheets, right? So you need that marketing content that leave behind for your customer to say, order this, or here's what we provide. It's got your branding on it. It's got, you know, whatever speeds and feeds you actually want to present to the customer, but also sort of capabilities and what they're looking for. Um, diving into sort of curated hardware a little bit. You know, we obviously need to understand your hardware, your CMS hardware capabilities. Can it do um, hardware decoding at certain resolutions? Uh, is it, you know, CPU, GPU bound, so on and so forth. Um, I also like to define segments, right? So, uh, you know, typical deployments, you know, have different size screens, orientations, number of screens, um, and typically break it into static, single channel 1080p, single channel 4K, and video wall. Um, if we segment the hardware solutions, you can sort of fit the demand curve a little bit better with some right size solutions and maybe not uh, overspect the hardware and provide single channel 4K for an entire solution when maybe only 10% needs it. Um, or your customer might be looking for simplicity and need that single channel 4K across all those devices, but we wanna have that conversation and understand um, if the if simplicity is the need or cost effectiveness, for example. Um, I name dropped Dice Configurator. Uh, it is something that you might have seen me talk about in the past. Like I said, we refreshed it uh, with some modern capabilities and uh, resiliency uh, UI refresh on the cloud side as well. Really what we're doing is moving configuration to the right part of the process. So you can build a configuration on the web. That configuration can be tested against your lab devices. Um, we can validate that it, you know, it changes the volume, it sets up the displays like I'd like it, um, it turns off Windows updates, turns them on, sets them only to Sunday, runs your PowerShell script, downloads your CMS, all of this, right? And we can test that. And then now it can be applied in the field. And when it gets applied in the field, you know that you're getting that same result you got in the lab testing. And we can set up different configurations, uh, you know, profiles for 
uh, the various things we have going on. So, for example, I might have some kiosk machines that are in landscape, and I might have some of them in portrait. I can do that display setup in Dice Configurator, and I get a six digit ID that I can apply um, the landscape to the landscape devices and portrait of the portrait devices. My technicians or the installers don't need to go through and configure all that by hand or page to the pages of instructions. I get a deterministic, um, uh, you know, testable output. Um, uh, in the web, and I'll, I'll show what this looks like a little bit later. Um, this is just an example of managing screens. I could set up a one by four video wall um, in screen mode extended. I can set that resolution on those displays and then orientation as well. Also have a configure out of box experience and configure out of box experience has those same settings that are available in the web. So we also have um, some scenarios where we might um, use the out of box experience instead of the cloud experience or a combo or, or so on and so forth. Looking at some example scenarios that we've driven with customers um, with this appliance methodology, and I'll I'll actually demo this thing getting provisioned um, with a with a toy CMS I wrote uh, that will display a video in just a second. But we have three scenarios that I think are sort of top of mind and maybe different than how people have been thinking about this in the past. Scenario one is configurator in a cloud ID. So you have a curated list of, you have a, a hardware appliance that arrives on site and the installer sets up a, and enters a six digit ID for each role. So, so maybe a, a portrait, a video wall, a landscape, single channel, and those have six digit IDs that they enter and the system gets configured. Um, those configurator profiles can be set up and tested ahead of time, right? So that's the value here of being able to do testing and have a deterministic output where um, you have a thousand machines with the exact thousand same settings. Scenario two would be the out of box experience driven uh, process. So the installer utilizes the on device out of box experience, which is uh, on display here and I'll uh, show on my screen as well. So you can actually read the text in a minute. So we have a linear on rails experience of, of customizing a system with uh, not having to hunt and peck around windows. And scenario three would be factory customized. So we can either customize um, based on your instructions using our tools or facilitate you remoting into that device via dice. The system arrives at the install site with no device configuration needed. Uh, that can even include things like static IPs. We have facilities for uh, sort of almost, out, well, we do have out of band management. We also have sort of out of uh, network adapter on the device management so that you can configure 100% of that device ahead of time. Demo. Um, I'm logged into DICE right now and I've, you know, clicked on here. Um, we're at configurator and I have a couple configurations just sort of out, out of the gate here. We can see the six digit config ID, which is what we enter into the unit to pull that from the web. And, you know, I have a, a name here. I'm just going to go into this um, one by four airport display. Uh, there's a number of settings we can do. We can set, uh, you know, computer name, including variables. We can join it to a domain. Um, we can uh, do things with adapters. So we can set up wireless adapters, SSIDs. Uh, we encrypt these passwords on the back end. Um, we can do GHCP or static, and we can add uh, up to four adapters. For hardware, uh, this hardware tab here, we can set the audio volume. We can also type it in if we want, and then we can do the screen setup. In this case, I have this set up as an extended desktop with uh, 1080p displays in a one by four configuration. They're set up to landscape. Uh, and re refresh here. Um, in this case, the screens are ordered uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and we simplified some of the other um, configurations as well. So we do have, you know, portrait and landscape, but we aren't doing, um, instead of giving you all of the choices for uh, position relative to other positions, we're actually just giving you some predefined patterns. Um, so in this case, this will actually configure the device as a one by four video wall. Other things we have in here, we can do auto login, including uh, creating the account, uh, also supports domain accounts, 
We can add wallpapers. We can run PowerShell scripts, which will be important for my demo in a second. Do shell replacements and set things like time zone and NTP. Right, so you know, pretty pretty standard kind of things that you'd want to configure on a system. Again, the point here is to make it simple, make it in one spot, single pane of glass, and then since this is uh, delivered via configurator, we can set this up and test it on machines in my lab, reimage it, test it again, reimage it, test it again, rerun configure, however you want to do that to validate that the configuration works for you. Uh, I'm not going to save my changes here. I am going to go to lobby kiosk. That's the one I'm actually demoing today. And if we look at lobby kiosk, what I'm doing in this one is I am setting up windows. Uh, I got a couple commands in here. And what I'm actually doing is downloading my little toy CMS and running it and then setting it as the shell. Where's our shell? Sorry. Oops. Um, I'm actually setting as our shell replacement here. So this is a good example of, I have a CMS, I want to install the CMS, maybe I want to install the newest version. So in this case, I'm actually pulling it from the internet from an Azure hosted machine that also hosts the content for this. I'm expanding that archive that contains my video player. I'm in, and then I'm setting up as my shell and I'm rebooting the computer, right? So a little bit of how the sausage is being made, but hopefully not too much. Um, so if I go to device management, um, this system's already been set up with our DICE systems management agent. So I will see it in my console here. Uh, it's actually this Lenovo right here. I can see that it's running Microsoft Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC. Again, that's part of the equation of 10 years of security patches without having uh, you know, feature updates. I can get other information on this system if I'm bored. If I want to really deep dive inside, I can see you know, what the actual resolution is currently, refresh rate, I can see the monitor, all kinds of fun stuff, but that's not what this demo is about. In this case, I'm just using this to connect to our KVM. I'm just gonna scroll a smidgen here, and what we see here is Configurator running on this system right here. If I don't, I can just enter a 6 digit ID and apply it, and we'll do that in just a minute, but I didn't wanna show the out-of-box experience as well. We can customize what screens are shown. So if your devices need to prompt for a machine name and uh, maybe like a time zone and nothing else, we can do that. Um, these are customizable, we have about 18 screens here. In this case, these screens all correspond to what you saw on the web, um, including the screen configuration. We do have some additional positional things here. We can replace the shell. Um, so fairly simple, right? We deliver that same experience in both places. In this case, what I'm doing is typing in, oops, made one mistake. One second, we're just gonna use our type parameter here. I was having a little bit of trouble with my keyboard today. I've typed the six digit ID in here. It's going to show up in this box. I'm going to make sure it's right so we don't make a mistake here. And then I'm going to hit finish. Um, right now, what it's doing is pulling that configuration from the web from DICE. So it's pulled that down. It has applied it. Um, in this case, applying that means downloading my um, my video player, my playback software, um, installing it and then rebooting the PC. And uh, we'll see this reboot in just a moment. Um, and I'll be able to connect. And then we should see some content running on this uh, right away. Uh, there we go. Yep, and it's playing my content already. So it's already connected to my backend server from the internet, pulled that video and started playing on a loop and I will, um, we can see here that it's a cat video. Obviously uh, the video quality over the remote uh, interface isn't 100% as it is live here, but hopefully you get a feeling for this high quality cat video that I'm sharing with you today. Um, I talked about a few other things that were in DICE. You know, you can see your orders. Um, we have some asset management fields where we can assign locations. Um, you know, the other cool thing I typically show people um, is location awareness, so I can actually physically see 
where this device is um, here. Uh, it's actually physically located at our, our new Mendota Heights, Minnesota office, and we've been, been here for a couple of days. So that's our demo of the appliance, um, relatively anticlimactic because the whole point is simplicity, right? So I um, had my CMS installed, configured and pulling content only with entering a six digit ID in this machine. If I needed additional configuration, I could apply that at the same time. I could have tested that back at my lab without any work. And I'm able to deliver that appliance experience um, that I would expect. Um, you know, always have a call to action at the end kind of thing. Um, good time for questions after this, but you know, I think there is some getting started, right? Um, if you're a CMS provider and want to have an appliance-like experience where your, your systems come with your CMS installed, um, ready to rock, maybe asking a couple questions of the customer and they hit finish and they get their content licensed and everything they want, that is definitely something we can help you with. Uh, definitely something, you know, creating a uh, custom screens, even configurator to, you know, go through your provisioning system. If you're an integrator looking for an easier deployment experience, um, we can put the whole thing on rails and give your installers the easiest, most pain-free time possible. And if you're an end user looking for an appliance, something that's simplistic, uh, doesn't involve a lot of IT people, and uh, can pass um, all the qualifications you have for your uh, you know, corporate requirements or your risk tolerance, that's again, something we can definitely help with. Um, you email nowmicroplayers at nowmicro.com or if you wanna have a very deep in the weeds conversation about technical stuff, we definitely email me as well.